Hello, I'm Sara of the Wizards Code. In this short video we are going to look at how we can create a crowd scene like this. Here we have 21 different orc models, with 180 orcs total in the scene. In this video we will show how to set up one of the orc models so that they look different in their movements and temperament. The orcs we'll use in this video are from an asset pack by Maxim Bugramov. In the complete scene we also use a pack from Andrei Yuha 1981, links in the description. All these orcs have a generic rig by default, but we can quickly convert them to humanoid and then apply a sitting animation from Mixamo. The auditorium comes from a pack by IL Ranch called Zeppelin Z25. This is a great asset for all your Zeppelin needs, but in this video we'll just use the auditorium. Let's get started. I've created a new scene in Unity and imported the Zeppelin asset, along with the Orcs asset. I've positioned the camera so that I can view the whole auditorium and set up some lighting and post-processing. The Orcs in this pack come with generic rigs. To convert to Humanoid we'll open the model and, on the Rig tab, change the animation type to Humanoid. Hit Apply to make the change. Now we can bring our orc into the scene by simply dragging the model into the hierarchy. We'll rename him to make him easier to find. Now we need an idle animation in the sitting position. Mixamo is an Adobe owned website that has a bunch of animations you can use for free. Go to mixamo.com and search for sitting. Then preview the ones you think might be useful. To download an animation simply click the download button. For Unity you need to select the FBX for Unity format. Click download again and save the file somewhere in your assets folder. The downloaded animations are in generic format, but just as with the model, we can convert them to humanoid. Select all the animations and then select the humanoid rig type and click apply. I downloaded three idle animations. Now I need to create an animation controller to use them. Right click in the project window and select create, animation controller. Give it a name such as sitting. Add each of the animations you want to use to this controller and link them together so that they will loop. Now assign your animation controller to the the animator on the orc model by dragging it into the inspector. Right now our model is not visible in the scene so let's drag them into view. Using shift control click we can ensure the model snaps to the floor in our scene. Now let's hit play and check out our sitting orc. That looks good. He's sitting and idling nicely. While in play mode let's move him into a seat. Now that we have him in a good position we will copy the transform, come out of play mode and paste the transform values into the model. So that he's in the right position. Let's hit play again and check he looks right. This is what the scene looks like with the second orc. The new orc is Ace Rock from the same Maxim Bugram of Pack. He looks just as good as Darden who we just created. However, there is a problem. Notice how the two orcs are idling in perfect synchronization. That doesn't look so good. So let's fix it. There are a number of different ways we might fix this. Here we will use a blend tree and blend between our three idle animations randomly. First we need to delete the existing animation state for sitting. Now create a new blend tree state in the animation controller. We will call this sitting idle. Rename the parameter to pose and add three motions to the blend tree. Drag each of your three animation clips into the blend tree. You will need to open the FBX object to find the clips within, 
then simply drag them into the inspector for the blend tree. Now hit play on the animation preview and move the slider to change the value of the pose parameter. You can see the blend tree works fine. In order to control the pose parameter in the blend tree we will use a state machine behavior. A state machine behavior is like a mono behavior that can be attached to animation states. Create one called idle state behavior by right clicking in your scripts folder and selecting C sharp script. Open the script in your favorite editor and put it in a namespace, we are going to use wizardscode.animator. This class should inherit from state machine behavior, so let's remove the mono behavior and its default methods. In the onStateUpdate method, which is called every frame, we will control the pose parameter in the blend tree. Override the onStateUpdate method. Create a last pose change duration to track how much time has passed since we last changed the pose. We will use this to decide when to change the pose. Whenever the last change duration is greater than the desired frequency of change we will need to update the pose parameter in the blend tree. To ensure that each orc starts in a different position set the default for the timer variable to infinity. This means the pose will be set on the first frame of this state. We'll simply use a random value to set the pose. You can use some more intelligent logic in here to create more lifelike pose variations. But random is good enough for now. We don't want to simply switch between poses so let's use the lerp function to create a smooth transition between the two. It's not good practice to use the string id of the animator parameter as it is slow. We need to resolve this, but let's make sure things work first. Add a fix me note to remind ourselves. Add the behavior to the sitting idle state by clicking the add behavior button. Test the behavior by clicking play and watching the animations. If you watch carefully you will see that sometimes the animation seems to stop. This is because our animations do not loop, so if we are in the same pose for longer than the animation it stops. To fix this we need to make the animation clips loop. However, right now they are read only as they are embedded in a model. Highlight each clip and duplicate them by hitting Ctrl D. Select each of the duplicated animations and in the inspector click the loop checkbox. Now replace the original animation clips in the blend tree by dragging the looped clips into the motion slots in the inspector for the blend tree. Now, when we hit play, we can see the animations continue. This looks much better. Now that we are sure everything is working well let's clean up our technical debt. We need to use a hash for the animator parameter rather than the string. First we need an integer variable to hold the parameter hash. Replace the hard coded string for the pose parameter with the hash variable. 
the hash value should be initialized in the onState enter method, so override that. Use the string to hash static method in the animator class to initialize the variable. Click play in Unity and check everything still works the same. You should not see any difference but this is now much more efficient code. At this point it is simply a matter of converting each of the orc models to humanoid and adding the animation controller to each. Because the pose is randomized each character will behave differently. Here is the complete scene with a total of 180 orcs within. With this many animated models most computers will struggle. There are a number of assets on the store that will help with this, but for this video I have used the Unity Recorder and Pegasus to record a cutscene at 60 frames per second. I have, however, added a couple of additional animations to the blend tree. This gives more variation. It's as simple as adding new motions to the tree and dragging the animations in just as we did in this video. Now that I have an auditorium full of orcs I have to figure out what they are here for. They are getting pretty restless and if I don't think of something quick who knows what will happen. Suggestions in the comments are welcome. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up and maybe leave a comment telling me what you thought, constructive criticism welcome. Click that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when I publish a new video. I hope to see you again soon.